welcome back here to 87.9 Sports Talk. A very sad day for Detroit Lions fans. Well, pretty much every day has been sad since that, I think, went two and nine or whatever. It's been a rough season. That's the point I'm trying to make here. As we have now reached the end of the season, the Lions are four and twelve. That is the record that they have finished with. And we're just gonna look at a quick recap of the whole season. There's a look at the team, the uh, depth chart, and all that stuff. Um, we're gonna take a quick look at the stats here, so you can see what's been going on. But we're gonna specifically talk about the game and kind of recap the season. So as you can see, Matt Stafford, 23 touchdowns, 21 interceptions, a career high in picks for Stafford. Rushing Dwayne Washington had a lot, great last two games, really turned it on towards the end of the season, and he might have got himself a starting halfback job. And in the receiving department, Golden Tate, 1,000 receiving yards. Marvin Jones could have had more if he wasn't out for, I think, about half of the season. And um, blocking, pretty rough for Riley V and um, Josh Schwartz. Neither of those guys are probably going to be returning to the team next season. Taylor Decker also gave up seven sacks. Not good at all. Then on the defensive side of the ball, well, I thought, oh, let's just look at the, never mind. Um, Let's just have a quick look at talking about the team right here. At, well, okay, we'll talk about the stats, I guess. Clover Quinn led in stats with 110 tackles. Not good for a free safety. He was cleaning up Quandary Diggs' messes on the left side of the field. So that's why he had a lot of tackles. Horrible season by Quandary Diggs. One of the worst in NFL history for any cornerback. And then in a second here, you're going to see the uh, tackles for loss. Devin Taylor, DeAndre Levy, Jonathan Bostic, Trevor Walker, and Sacks. Ziggy Ansa with 14.5, 14 and a half stacks. Very impressive for the draft pick out of BYU. The project player has really turned into a stud. Interceptions, DeAndre Levy had six. Darius Lee had five. Jonathan Bostic had three. Gordon Quinn had two. Don Terry had two. Quandre Dix had two. And the rest had one. But now, um, here's some of my thoughts on the team this season. Um... Obviously, it was a bit of a disappointing season as a whole. You know, Jim Carbo was fired. He was shown the door. But I think that um, there's some talent on this team. But obviously, there's a couple of holes that need to be filled immediately. And those holes are a feature number one running back. And a number two corner that can actually, you know, cover routes, not Quandre Dix. Anyone besides Quandre Dix and Devin Lawson that is a competent cornerback, they're wanted on this team in the number two corner class. Um, those are the two big holes to me. I mean, you could argue number one receiver as well, but. I don't know about that. And let's face it, part of the problem this year was Matthew Stafford. I mean, you cannot throw 21 interceptions and expect your team to make the playoffs. You know, he, he needs to get it together. He needs to get his act together. It seemed like once Jim Bob Cooter simplified the offense for him, I believe it was the Saints game that he kind of simplified the reads for him. Stafford kind of got together. But the problem is, Stafford shouldn't need to be baby, you know, for him to get his interception numbers down. He needs to be able to air it out and put the team on his back. People were expecting him to put the team on his back, and he really didn't do that this year. You know, he, he tried, obviously. He tried, he wanted to, but too often he let the team down with these back-breaking interceptions. And, you know, that's a lot of them were just bad, unacceptable, you know. He was just trying to force the ball in there to receivers where it clearly wasn't open. But I'm going to admit, it's not all Stafford. Um, 
The team needs a competent running back back there. Mir Abdullah did absolutely nothing last year. Theo Riddick, he, he's a passing back. He's a good passing back, but he's a passing back. And he's going to get, he's going to want to get paid number one halfback money. So I don't think Riddick is going to come back next year. Well, the way in Washington, he played well last year, but the Packers and the Cowboys had two of the worst run defenses in the league. So, I don't know if that's really saying much, you know. We're going to have to see what he does next season, if he even gets the next season, depending on what the Lions do in the draft. Considering they're picking number five overall, they're going to have a shot at a Dalvin Cook right there. Maybe even a Leonard Fournette if the Raiders pick someone else, because the top two picks, Brown and Bears, most likely going to be quarterbacks. Then the 49ers, I mean, if they pass in Miles Garrett, they're insane. So, the Raiders are sitting right there at four. It depends on what they do. But they might have a shot at Fournette or a Dalvin Cook. And if the Lions have a shot at a Dalvin Cook, you take Dalvin Cook. I'm sorry, you take Dalvin Cook. He'd be the best available player on the board at that point. Now you can see the rest of the league stats and all that stuff. Um, I just think the Lions, they have a little bit of ways to go here. And it'll be interesting to see what they do in terms of getting this team right. You know, um, obviously they brought in Daryl Bevel, and he should be a very good head coaching hire. But once again, Stafford should need to be baby. He's in his seventh year now. He needs to get his act together, and he needs to play better. I think it comes down to that. The dude's almost thirty now. It it time for him to stop making the childish mistakes, the horrible reads, he, he needs to get his act together, and hopefully he does, so that the team can actually take the next step in Daryl Bubbles for here, and maybe win their first playoff game since 1991, so that'd be, that'd be really nice for the team, maybe just making the playoffs in Daryl Bubbles first season would be a good goal. But I, I doubt that's going to happen. You know, the team is 4-12 right now. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs next season. Let's be honest. So that's all I have to say about the team. Just kind of looking ahead around the league. Patriots, Seahawks, Super Bowl. What are we going to pick? Um, I think i got to go with the Patriots, man. I think Tom Brady is going to get his fifth ring. Get the five rings on his fingers, and Brady said in his media day that he does not intend on retiring, even if he does win his fifth ring. He does not intend on retiring. He says he's going to play till his arm falls off, so we'll see if he actually goes through with that. I don't think he will. I think he'll decide to call it quits, but who knows? Maybe he doesn't. You know? I guess we'll find out, but that's it for us here on 87.9 Sports Talk. Here's a look at some of the yearly awards. The NFL honors, if you missed them last night, Russell Wilson was indeed named the MVP. Coach of the Year went to Mike McCoy. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Andy Dalton and his 40 TD passes. Defense Player of the Year, Justin Houston. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Paxton Lynch. Defense Rookie of the Year, Jalen Ramsey, just beating out Jihad Ward in the last week of the season. NFC Defense Rookie of the Year, DeForest Buckner. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Jared Goff. Um, defensive Player of the Year, Brandon Graham with his 20 sacks. And Russell Wilson, of course, Offensive Player of the Year. That's it for us on 87.9 Sports Talk.